<laughs> Joy with me today is Darth Microtransaction, and we're going to talk about the monetization structure in Diablo Immortal and what it means to you. And I feel like this is a a video targeted towards people that already play Gacha games, people that already play Galaxy of Heroes, people that already play Marvel Strike Force. A lot of you are considering playing Diablo Immortals. And so that's what we're going to talk about. This is for the video for like if you're coming from Diablo 3 and, and you hate monetization, you can get a lot of that information elsewhere. <laughs> a lot of people hate this game and, and, and yeah. the idea that there's any kind of monetization, a lot of bad press. And we're not here to justify it or anything like that because it is outrageous in a lot it of ways. It is pay to win. It is pay to win. And it's, it, we're no. not going to not justify it. But I, I feel Context. like, but I, but yeah, I feel like we just want to explain how monetization works in this game, and that way you can make a decision. It'll have a work for you because I think this game will appeal probably to two types of players, right? Would you say two types of players? Are we we're there, going to identify there's only yeah, there's yeah. two target markets, two demographics. I would say. All right, so let's let's just talk about the obvious before we get into the three types of players and the target market for this game. Uh, Diablo Mortal wants one hundred ten thousand dollars to fully gear up a single character. We're not really sure if the math on that is accurate or not, but it is high, right? You would you would say that the game and the gear system, specific, specifically the legendary gem system, is is pretty like crazy long term progression. That you know they said it takes ten years to max it out. What's your experience with this idea right here? Because this is, is everybody. Everybody just talks about this. So that's all they talk about. It is a very expensive game. Yep. It is designed of a tip of the iceberg type of thing where what you do is you spend a little bit of money and then the people who like the game, who have the financial means, will go all the way down the iceberg and spend the rest of it. However, it's one of two things. It's either you're all the way in or you're basically just a battle pass free to play Andy. You're one or the other, really. This game's not designed for people like me, which is why I'm stopping really to spend money because uh, it, it's not designed for people that are spending like a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, up to $500. Right. Like it's designed for way, yeah. way more than that. And, and I wanna, that's what we're gonna talk about because that's the way I feel like the entire direction of mobile gaming industry is heading. And, and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, Quinn69 is a New Zealand Twitch streamer and he doesn't really like the game at all. He's trying to prove a point that the game is pretty expensive. He's live right now. He has spent 7,600 New Zealand dollars, which is over $5,000. And he has zero five-star gems. Uh, you said that, that that is completely, you could just get lucky and get one. And, but this well, is- I, I know for a fact the numbers are gonna be skewed because I the, I ran a, uh, the first Elder Rift we ever ran with one of my friends, Smiley TK, shout out to him. He got a five out of five on the first right. run. But what what is the math that you've done suggest how much it should cost to get a five five gym? Like, like $30,000. $30,000, 30, yeah. So it's a lot of money. This game is very expensive. And I, I wanna clearly define three types of players in this game or in, in mobile games in general. We got players that are free to play players then, and, and maybe they'll spend on a battle pass, right? Free to play, maybe they'll spend, like the battle pass in this game is actually relatively inexpensive. It's $5 and then there's a secondary one. It's not really a battle pass, but it's like a, a $10 subscription, right? You could be, you could basically play this game for $15 a month and get those items and get relatively good value. Then there's the the, the Kraken, Krakeny, Krakenins that will spend unlimited amounts of money. And uh, I, I assume they're big boys. Nobody's putting a big gun to their head. They spend their money how they, they have the money to spend. And there will be people that will spend this kind of money. Now, this is not alarming to you and I because we have played other games, yeah. Marvel Strike Force, Galaxy of Heroes, Raid Shadow Legends, so on, where people we know personally that we've talked to have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars a game. This is a reality with Gasha games, right? I would, I would put it this way. It's akin to violence. I have seen violence in person many times, so it no longer shocks me when it happens. When oh I'm my God. It. I wouldn't go that far to equate it to violence. But here I mean, you know, my that's my metaphor for it. I'm not right. saying it's a good thing, my friend. I am saying, however, I've been around this enough to know right. this is not this is this is the tip of the iceberg for mobile games. For people that are getting new into this conversation, yeah, pay be, the careful, win, be careful, right? This gets oh. worse than this. This yeah. is the yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, this is a thing. So, like if, if you've never played uh Gasha mobile games before. Uh, and uh, and you just think it's great to spend money. There is a lot of money that you can spend in the game. I think there's like even a case 
uh, where someone embezzled a bunch of money and spent a million dollars in Game of War. I mean, there are reports of people spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on mobile titles in the past. It, it's just a thing. But this is what I want to talk about is that uh, there's this idea out there that really frustrates me. And, and uh, where like, if the game was cheaper, more money would, more people would spend money on the game. It sounds like a logical argument, right? Like if you, would, the, you would think so, because it's like, oh, think about how many millions of people will give them money then. Yeah, and, and my understanding, and, and this is going with other Yasha games that I've played, is that it's not necessarily true. Uh, they, 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 they've issued out discounts in the past, and what the developers have told me is that it didn't move enough of the free-to-play players to spend, and all it was really doing is giving a discount to the Krakens that always spend. And so it wasn't a a big deal. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about what who this game is not for. And I hate to say this, uh, I, I play Marvel Strike Force and I spend 300, about $300 a month on the game, three, $400 a month the game. And I try to min-max my purchases to keep up with the guys that are spending thousands of dollars a month, right? And yeah. it, it doesn't seem like this game has a place for that type of spender. I, 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 would you agree that is that largely true? It, it has a place. That place is just not at the top of the leaderboard. Your place is in the middle of the leaderboard with everyone else who is doing that. Okay, so I, I just wanted I just wanted to, to point this out because I know a lot of people are coming from uh, that are watching this video have played other mobile games, and, and they would expect if they spent two hundred dollars, if they spent five hundred dollars, which from the people that I talk to, that is kind of a, a relatively normal thing. It does happen quite a bit. I think what they're going to find in, in Diablo Immortal is there's not a lot of value for, for that. Is that that's that's where we're going with this conversation, right? So you are correct. There is a if in terms of gacha and mobile game value, there is a few packs that are like fifty dollars that seem pretty good value, akin to what their normal pricing is. However, once you get beyond about two hundred dollars, the pricing falls off a cliff very fast and uh your upgrades are few and far between it is rng based in order to get better legendary gems and it gets more and more expensive right. uh, i'll tell you for a fact the last 200 dollars did absolute it did zero for me 200 dollars literally didn't i couldn't i couldn't do anything with it and so uh this was the experience of a reddit post uh i don't know how to say that world uh but he was he was a he's a he's a person that has spent tens of thousands of dollars on Gasha Games, and he spent two hundred dollars on Diablo Immortal in the first twenty-five hours of gameplay. And he said that having spent two hundred dollars, I can confidently say that the difference in the experience and power is marginal at best. Exactly what you just said. Probably need yeah. to spend two thousand dollars to see a dramatic improvement. That's what we were calculating. Also, I was talking to Kyra Mobile, and he's a barbarian, and barbarian is absolutely broken in PvP. But we were looking at his gems and mapping it out, and if he wanted to be exactly to where he needs to be in order to really be that one-shot disgusting PvP god, mm -hmm. it would cost him about two thousand dollars. Okay, and so here's the takeaway from the video. I think what we're going to getting it because I think this sums it up right here. It feels like Money Wise Blizzard's really only targeting small spenders. Because I've heard that. I mean, that is the true uh, beauty of, uh, of free-to-play mobile games. If you can go in and spend little or no money, you can get the most out of the game, right? You're, you, you really can, because it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if someone... Make is... no mistake, the game is good if you spend yeah. no money or $5. I mean, the game, like, I, I know I'm coming hard against the game, as is everybody else, because we're talking about the pay to win and how the, right. the tip of the iceberg. The thing is, the top of that iceberg is a paradise island. Like, it's actually a good game. It's when you go down, like you just can't, you can't get sucked in. And it's good to get, you know, pe people can get sucked in pretty easily by games like these. I get sucked in like games yeah. like these, I'll, I'll freely admit it. Yeah, for the middle middle class whales, spending money here feels like a really bad garden. The gains Perfect. are minuscule. And, and then he makes a strange case, which I'll, I'll agree with him, that in some ways this is free to play friendly. Unless somebody is willing to spend tens of thousands of dollars or thousands of dollars, uh, that's where they're going to see the significant gain, gain, you know, uh, you know, power improvements over a free to play player. And maybe, you know, it's it's kind of like we, we talk about this game is very much like an extreme version of the Pareto principle where, you know, 20 percent of the people are are, are spending 80 percent of the money. I would go as far as to say that this this business model, this game is probably closer to five percent, five percent, maybe one percent of this this game is funding yeah, the entire game one percent yeah. yeah it's one or two percent i think and so I, so that is the point of the video and that is your your personal experience is that 
Uh, if you're a modest spender, a dolphin, a, 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 or a middle class whale, I don't know what it got, but it, a person it, it's that is designed for thousands, not hundreds. It's yes, a fact. Yes, this game is designed for thousands, not hundreds. And uh, so the real value, I believe, is uh, approaching it free to play. Anything you want to say before we go? No, I mean, I, I think buy the battle pass or play free to play and try the game because after all the conversation and all of that, it is actually a good game. And even all of the reviews they're dumping on, we're talking millions of combined views on YouTube, all saying the game's garbage. And all of those, they say the game is good, yeah, but do. it has bad monetization. They all say it. Yeah, and, and I just don't want, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people know the monetization bad, but it, I think it's so extreme even compared to other mobile titles where... I feel like there in most mobile games that I've played, there's this middle of the road path that makes sense that doesn't really happen here in Diablo Immortal. I'll give you one other comparison before we go, which is it's akin to like in the Halo TV show, Master Chief removes his helmet so everyone's upset by it, right? But because of that, and they don't have a good story to back it up, so people are double upset. But this game is like he removed the helmet, but then the story's fire. He's just killing everything, just slaying. The whole movie show's good, but he removed his helmet. So there's still the backlash. That's Diablo Amore, though. It has a backbone behind it, but he removed the helmet. Yeah, oh, I, I feel like this game was set up for massive backlash four years ago with the you know, with Wyatt and don't you guys have phones and like everybody is everybody everybody assumed the game was pay to win and it is and 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 the monetization on it is is a bit extreme and it's everything everybody feared in a lot of ways right at least the the naysayers from back in 2018 were largely right yes they are largely right um if you come from the gaming, like mobile gaming space, and you've been conditioned by other mobile games, then you feel like then it's it's not as bad. The reality is you can still spend $100,000 on this Diablo game. The other reality, like I've already said in these type of conversations to many people, is like, I've been doing this since Pokemon cards. Yeah. Like, since I was a kid, I've been, I like, I... I'm a gamer who gets sucked into dopamine. I want to know what's coming up next. And companies that do a good job at implementing that into games are probably going to suck money out of me. Right. That's a problem. And you can vote on it if you want and try to add regulation if you want to and say what your opinion is on my right to be able to do that. But that has always got me since I was a kid. Yep. All right. Well, head over to Darth Microtransaction channel. You're making tons of helpful guides. You've got some great videos about there where to, to get optimized and min-max especially if you're doing that uh, and that'll do it for today. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Keep on gaming. Bye for now. I hope you hit the like button today. Get a rank eight. <laughs> Smash the like six button. Star <laughs> yeah, yeah, six star legendary gym. <laughs> that doesn't exist. Eight star. <laughs>